Hi, I'm Kay Bender. I'll be your peace place yoga person for as long as you'd like to join me. And one thing I want you to know is that before we start practicing yoga, there are some things that are really helpful to know. First of all, when I first started practicing yoga back at the YMCA in Nashville, the instructor did nothing to help teach me about yoga before I began my practice. For years, I went through the motions of yoga and I didn't know I was doing it wrong. I recommend highly that if you haven't ever worked with a skilled, informative yoga teacher, that you find one and learn how to do it right before you practice at a gym or with an online class or anywhere else. Because if you haven't learned the basics, you probably won't be doing it right. Yoga is not just the physical practice. It's paying attention internally to what's going on with you, mindfully participating in the practice and making sure that you're doing what's right for your body and your well-being. If it feels wrong, it is wrong. Don't worry about doing things in a little bit more modified way. Don't worry about opting out from certain practices. Not every practice is right for every person or everybody. Remember to take attention internally every time you're practicing yoga to make sure that what you're doing that particular day is right for the way your body is that particular practice. What you've done in the past isn't necessarily what you need to be doing today. Thinking about where you might be in the future, that also isn't the most effective way to be practicing yoga. Being in the present moment, in your body, doing what's right for you is important and essential to getting the real yoga practice that you need. Yoga always is a personal practice. So if you've got any issues with your spine, make sure that you've talked to your medical professional before you begin your practice. Make sure that if you do twists in particular, that you're gentle if you have a low back issue or a neck problem and you don't want to make it worse because certain things in yoga do exacerbate certain physical conditions. Make sure if you do have those issues that you talk with the yoga teacher before you begin your practice and learn any modifications that might help you. When I do a class, I usually start with some very gentle, basic warm-ups. And then from there, we progress through more rudimentary practices to more difficult versions of the practice. Or I incrementally build throughout the practice to warm your body up and make sure that you're ready for the more vigorous things that we might do later in the practice. With a 30 minute class, it's almost impossible to really do a whole lot of yoga after our warm up and before our final relaxation. So there's a very limited amount of actual yoga asanas or postures that we will be doing in each class. The thing to remember is don't avoid the warm-ups. They are important and essential because we don't use our spines a lot on day-to-day -day basis. And by doing all the warm-ups, we use our spines in its six directions so that we get the spine fully warmed up before we're using our body in our yoga practice. The spine is essential to doing yoga. The other thing to remember is at the end of class, we will always finish with a twist to align and balance the body and energy before our final relaxation. And don't neglect the final relaxation. It's important to build the cellular memory and synaptic connections that you will make over time as you do your yoga practice. This is how you begin incrementally improving and remember too, it's always possible to improve your yoga practice, no matter how much practice you've had. 
Everything that we do in yoga can be incrementally improved by putting your mind internally into observing what you're doing during your practice. Remember always to be noticing how your extensions are as you extend, where the positioning of your shoulders is so that you're not hunching up and tensing your muscles. Always make sure that when you're in a position, you're making sure that the earth support is coming up through your bones to support you so your muscles do not have to work as hard. If you're making a lot of effort in your yoga practice, you haven't found the most effective position for your body to be supported by the earth. Always the bones are going to be the structure of your pose and your muscles shouldn't be having an effortful time doing your practice. If you're finding that it's still tensing and tightening, relax and make sure that your structure is improving so that you get more support out of your bones and your muscles don't have to work so hard. No matter what positions we practice in our yoga, there is always a way that you can do it a little bit more easily, a little bit more effectively. When you do yoga right, it's effortless. Even if you hold a position for an extended period of time, your muscles shouldn't be vibrating and tensing and tightening as you're holding it. You should be allowing the earth support to come up through your bones, allowing your muscles to relax and making sure that you're being effortless as you possibly can. Remember too, that from one day to the next, your body does change. If you've got an injury, like I injured my hip one year, it takes time for that to improve and get back to normal. So you may never get back to the same level of practice before your injury. So don't push yourself and don't expect yourself to always be doing exactly the same thing each time. As you build your practice, you may also find things get easier and easier. That doesn't mean that you should slack off and just go through the motions of your practice. That is not yoga. Always being in the moment, in your body, noticing what you're doing during the practice is the important part of actually being in the yoga of the moment. Yoga means your body, mind, and energy are all connected at once. You're not having your mind someplace else while you're putting your body through a bunch of different motions. Remember always, be in the practice. And if you can't do it, then turn off the video and do it later. That's the beauty of the online practice. But make sure when you're in the practice doing it, that you're in the moment, in your body, noticing what's happening internally for you, and that you're doing what is right for your body, not what you see on the screen or what somebody else may be doing, but what is right for your body at that particular moment. When you can do that, then you can say you are a yoga yogi or a yogini, and you're doing an actual yoga practice. Until then, you're just going through the motions. It's no better than an exercise class at the gym. So always, when you're ready to do yoga, take a few moments to breathe because the breath connects the body and the mind and enables you to actually be practicing yoga. When you breathe fully and deeply, filling your lungs, inflating, exhaling completely, you are actually energizing and effectively performing the practice of yoga. There are usually ways of breathing that enhance the practice. And usually I will mention when to breathe in, when to breathe out in order to make it the most effective and efficient practice of yoga. It's always a good idea to make those choices to pay attention to your breath and your body and make sure that your mind, body, and energy are all effectively working together. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to contact me through my website or by email. 
And if you have questions that you want answered immediately, seek out a local yoga teacher that's experienced, has been trained, and knows what they're doing. I'm certified in Amrit Yoga. I've also practiced at Kripalu and with several nationally known teachers, as well as experienced some of those guru practices. It's not essential to do those things, but they can help and enhance your practice if you have those opportunities. But no matter what you do, make sure that you get real teaching to know how to perform each of the practices to the best of your body's ability, particularly if you've got any inhibitions in any parts of your body that you need to be aware of and accommodating for. I hope that you'll enjoy the practices. They're generally basic, generally gentle, and always ending with that meditative final relaxation so that you can focus inward and allow yourself to have that moment of quiet. When I used to teach yoga at Tennessee State University, I made my students do a 15 minute relaxation at the end of class. When they began class with me, they were resistant. They didn't believe that any relaxation was worth 15 minutes of their time. By the time my students ended the semester, they often said that that 15 minutes was the most important time of their week because it was the only time that they took to really be internal and aware of themselves and what was going on with them at that particular time. Throughout the yoga practice, throughout the physical practice, always important to be paying attention to your body. When you're in that meditative relaxation at the end, it's most important to get in touch with that peace deep within and let that fill your body and mind. Instead of those thoughts of the moment, those tensions, tensions of the body, but always to be enabling that expression of peace within you because we all have that peace deep within. And I hope you'll find that peace in your body, in your mind, deep within your being during each of your yoga practices as you become experienced. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy the yoga practices. I hope you especially enjoy those deep relaxations when you can get really in touch with the peace deep within. That's why we call the practice the peace place.